Jay, that the star of Bethany over the, over the weekend or over last weekend, I think, right? Last weekend, I didn't mention to you guys before. I was roped in to do a little set on the Friday, which, you know, for me, was a big deal because um, the star of Bethany, out of all the kind of like electric pubs or Beth or star kind of franchises they have in London. That's probably the one marquee one I'd say, right? The Star of Bethnal. Um, it's the one that's the most busiest. It's the one um, where people tend to dance on a dance floor. It's the first time in, I don't know, maybe six months, right? I've had people actually dancing on a dance, like packed dance floor. Not, don't get me wrong. The Heath Cotton Star had people dancing too, but a packed dance floor, like a nightclub. It's the first time in a long time. And it's really weird, right? Um, I think... That's probably the thing that really separates, you know, warm up DJs to kind of big acts is that that kind of interaction, that kind of energy you feel with people when they're kind of staring at you um, where you're the DJ, right? You might as well be Seth Truxler. You might as well be Nina Kravitz, right? You're the DJ. They're staring at you. The energy they give you, um, the awkwardness, if you maybe clang a mix a little, a little bit, which I did a couple of times. It's just everything is kind of heightened and you're ultra sensitive to everything around you. So I guess maybe that's the major difference of bigger DJs. They're able to stay cool, calm and collected in that zone, right? And really kind of work things through. And really, there's a way of looking at the crowd and there's a, there's a way of looking at the crowd and reading the crowd. I think looking at the crowd would just be just seeing the first couple of rows. I think I've heard stand-up comedians say it where you look at the first couple of rows and you notice somebody not laughing and he just completely throws you off. But I think when you're a bigger DJ, you probably are able to look past the first three, four, I don't know, five rows and maybe spot that dude in the corner tapping his feet. Stop, spot that girl in the corner just coming in who's kind of nodding and, 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 and giving a smiley face, right? You can spot these kind of things and read kind of where the room is kind of going because those those first front rows are not necessarily a representation of the entire club and neither is the one in the back. So you kind of have to kind of, you know, make this, this is a to and fro game. Um, but yeah, I did well. I think everyone was really happy. I got some good um, thumbs up and good kind of pats on the back from the bar staff, which is always encouraging because, you know, those guys are usually the people you tend to try to impress them most because, you know, they are there. They're at the pub day in, day out. It's a job to them. So they're not that much enthralled by music and shit. So if you're able to kind of impress them in that way, regard, I think usually you're on the winning track. The guests were pretty happy, if not a bit demanding. Um, again, it kind of was in a reminder of just, you know, what low level that I'm at where I'm just having to kind of bat away so many insane, inane questions. Honestly, I've never understood the person that goes up to a DJ and requests a song ever, ever in my life. I think even before I was a DJ, even before I did anything of that sort of like, the only time I'd go up to DJ to say anything would be to pull back a tune, right? To wheel it, right? And that's kind of like, you know, dub culture, um, jungle, jungle, grime scene, garage scene, you know, it was, it was big in, in, the, in the UK or in London specifically right spinning back a tune and i think a dj recently kind of got in trouble for that kind of um, thing because you know nowadays people are overly sensitive and that no one really wants to see that thing happening anymore i think maybe club cultures evolved i don't know whatever it is no one really does uh wheel ups anymore but that's the only time i'd go up to dj before right to request a wheel up and even then it wouldn't happen right and the fact that it wouldn't happen would just add the tension to it right the dj would say no nah, not this one trust me you're gonna want me to wheel up the next one and the next one comes and you're like oh my god he was right and he was up yeah that happens sometimes, but you know, again, you can't overuse it, right? It's like a kind of, it's like it's like a cheat code. You have to kind of drop only a couple of times here and there. So, um, but then these people, man, they they regularly come up to you and ask you insane questions. And the thing about it that I think I remember listening to, um, uh, what was it? Jerry Seinfeld says something really funny about it, right? When he was on the radio show with um Tom Papa, what well, he says something really, 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 um kind of arrogant, similar to like, you know, Jay-Z when he said, oh, my presence is charity. What did Jay Steinfeld say? Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Jay Steinfeld, Tom Pepper, he said something really funny about writing jokes and about someone in the crowd about how hard it is and how good he is at doing it, right? Jay Steinfeld, uh, Netflix radio, it's a Netflix radio show, let's see if I can find it. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. It was really, and I think that kind of got in my head about, you know, People really think that they have a good suggestion to give you when it's like, no, you will never have a good suggestion to give me because you're not good at this, right? I am. Or I'm better than you at this, right? I'm not amazing, but I'm better than you at least. Uh, give me a break. Let me see if I can find this video. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Fuck. Uh, it was a video where he kind of said something really funny about um, how people act. Let me see if I can find it. Come on. No, I'm gonna quit this anyway. Let me let me let me quit that one and find it. But I'm definitely gonna find this video. Hundred percent, I can find this video. It's a really funny one. I remember it made me giggle when I saw it. But essentially, the video kind of is him basically, um, you know, chastising a guest. I mean, a a, vis, uh, a viewer 
about um how is how they think it's so easy to write jokes he's like no i do this professionally this is my job you know i mean i'm really fucking good at this you have no idea what you're talking about sort of thing you know in the standard kind of jerry steinfeld fashion that he kind of does things where it's always kind of a bit um cut for a but anyway doesn't matter let's move on um but yeah, it was a good experience. I really enjoyed it. As, as I said before, it's the, most, it's the biggest one. I really went to impress, so I did. Um, I had to kind of um, cancel going to a friend's party on the Friday and ended up going there on the um, Saturday instead because of it. And this is all because of Joey Diaz, by the way, as well. Joey Diaz is the one that kind of inspired me to kind of, you know, have that kind of mindset when it comes to gigs and all that sort of malarkey. Like nothing else comes in. Nothing comes in my way in front of a gig like nothing nothing else takes priority over it in front of a gig i don't care where they're where i'm playing how much they're paying me i'd much rather play out than go and you know hang out with my friends or whatever so i've got that singular focus of just trying to get as be- as good as i can better as i can over a period of time and i think so far so good man i think it's worked out quite well if anything i probably need to um i think room for improvement will be to kind of get more in depth for my tunes and really try and um explore some sounds that i want to play switch up some some playlists i've got that i've been using you know for dog for dog years um and then maybe start doing some techno mixes um specifically because of this weekend i will be into kent i went to kent for my friend's uh, birthday and it was fucking amazing really enjoyed it i think everyone had a good time it's always good to kind of get out of london and kind of you know and just kind of unwind yourself and unplug from the uh you know the standard drudgery of everyday life in london or the city life in general um and then we had um fortunately they set up some decks right to dj on and that was fucking awesome they brought proper cdjs down a mixer the whole shebang and we were able to play and stuff and you know i got to play a couple of tunes and stuff whatever but you know considering how fucked up everyone was and how much we've been drinking um the general mood didn't really call for what i had in my playlist right i had whatever i play usually in my bars and pubs house disco whatever maybe called so everyone was mostly playing uh, techno and stuff so i didn't really necessarily have that sort of things on my playlist and then i realized you know what for as much techno events as i go to for as much techno as i listen to i don't really upload a lot of techno mixes online mainly because i don't really think um that's an avenue that i'm gonna get booked down in right because you know there is that's kind of like the top tier of djs but i think in general it's a limiting belief as well that i'm putting on myself i should just upload a mix who cares right it's my soundcloud no one gives a fuck anyway um and in general just to kind of again to kind of set the levels and show that no i am on that level as well i can play those sets with my eyes closed easily easy peasy and so far i've kind of got a place of songs that i want to put forward i want to you know put into a mix i'm going to upload very very soon but just so that it was not it was just another good reminder of just um how much more i have to learn and how much more i got to do um and how much more i have to impress right because in general you know those guys didn't really know me and um, they just heard why i played them for you know this isn't really for us or especially in that kind of scenario you want something a bit more harder you want to come a bit more edgy and stuff so that's what i'm going to do now this week especially with the bank holiday weekend i'm going to sack off carnival um i would love to go to be honest but i've just got so much stuff to do that you know i want to upload more podcasts i want to just hang i just want to do some more mixes i might go to a couple of shows and see some djs play but i just want to be i know i want to be active i want to be creative i don't want to waste my time kind of going to a carnival which is not it's not really a waste of time but you know i don't want to the time that i have especially bank holiday mondays and stuff which are you know some rare occasions to kind of get some great work done i don't want to waste that kind of going um out and do that stuff because you know kind of was a whole day affair it's not like a thing you could just pop into for a couple of hours you know you have to kind of commit your whole entire day to it which i'm not really fond of at the moment which i'm not really down to do at the moment to be completely honest 